hello guys welcome back to another video and in this video we will see what is OAuth how it works and we will see a lot of vulnerabilities related to OAuth so let's get into it so here we are on our computer screen you can see that now first of all what is OAuth and why we need this? We have to understand what, why, why we are using the functionality. So we are using this link of Ujwaloja. I don't know I'm pronouncing it right or wrong, but that's it. Now, first of all, what's actually happening before OAuth? So you would have to provide your username and password to the third party, and then they will use this OAuth credentials, right? But after it. They was having some problems related to the OAuth thing. What are the problems? Apps store the user's password. So if the data leaks, then your password also leaks. If the app is just trading that thing, they usually don't do that. But if something is happening to that website, then your password or username may get leaked and you have, you have used that password to many places. Usually people do that. Now second thing is app get completely access to the user's account it's also a critical problem now user can't revoke access to the app except by changing password that's one more issue now compromise apps expose users password yeah that's what i'm exactly talking about if the app get compromised then users password will be leaked now what's actually happening before oauth1 so password authentication was used Many services implemented uh, things similar to OAuth 1. Each implementation was different. Then comes the OAuth 1. OAuth 1 standardized how different services implemented authorization. Look, the OAuth, the auth stand in OAuth. Like, look at this. The auth in the OAuth is not for authentication, it's authorization. Okay, so let me clear that. Now, OAuth 1 standardized how different services implemented authorization but there were some limitations like then OAuth 2 introduction now open standard to authorization the basic idea of OAuth 2 then specify how resource owner authorized third party access to their several resources now these are the basic terminologies but before terminologies we have to understand the OAuth concept completely I know that this thing is not that enough to understand that. So first of all, what is OAuth 2.0? Simple language. OAuth 2 is a protocol that allows user to grant a third-party website or application access to the user's protected resources without necessarily revealing their long-term credentials or even their identity. That's the simplest definition you will find of OAuth. And if I say that it's an authorization framework, you can see this here. Now it enables third party application to obtain limited access to a service now for example um if you are basic if you are extremely basic to OAuth then you can consider that OAuth has the login with facebook login with google login with github you you know whenever you go to some sign in or sign up page you will see that sign up with google sign up with uh, um facebook sign up with gitlab and a lot of things so that's what we are talking about that's the OAuth thing right now we have seen login with Facebook button on various websites which get an access token from the user from the Facebook because we are logging it with Facebook and uses this limited information from Facebook to create account alright so this technically yes uh, kind of safe method when we are sharing our information with third party applications now how it is working actually so there is a lot of resources on how it is working but let's first of all see these things there are four terminologies resource owner it's you you own the resource like technically the user now the resource server the api client is the third party web application and authorization server the server authorizing the client app to access the resource of the owner for more deep thing let's go here and you can see this client application resource owner OAuth service provider you can these are also classified as this thing and 
Let me go. Up. So these are the basic uh, things you can say that authorization code. These are the other uh, you can say that other terminologies which we use. So these are also important. So let's take a look on them. Authorization code. Later, these exchanges with access token to access user own resources. Implicit. The third party app directly get an access token, then this can be used to access resources. Resource owner password credentials. Third party directly derive an access token by credentials, which are usernames and password. Now client credentials. Application request for access token to use their own resource. I know that this can be little bit complicated when we are just reading all the terminologies, resources, but wait for it, you will get everything. So yeah, here we get the thing: the resource owner, the client, the resource server, and the authorization server. Now, let's take a deep look into it. What is resource owner? The resource owner is the user who authorizes an application to access their account. The application access the access to the user's account is limited to scope of authorization granted, like read or write access. Now, what is the client? The client is the application that want to access the user's data. Simple. But before it do, it must authorized by the user and authorization must be validated by the API. Now, what is the resource server? The resource server hosts the protected user accounts and data to be retrieved by client. Now, in the end, what is the authorization server? The authorization server verifies the identity of the user, then issues access token to the client. Now this is the very basic thing. Now let me go back to the slides. Now here is the image. This is the application of client authorization server and the resource server. So you are just sending authorization request, authorization grant. Then you are just giving the authorization grant to the authorization server. And then you are getting access token and via using the access token you can get to the resource server and you will get the resources so this is how this thing is working so let me hold a bit here so you can actually see this thing or you can pause and understand what is this so alright now we have understood the basic thing how it is working what is it uh, it's about how it looks like like if I go deep into it there is a lot of things if I try to explain it completely then it can be a little bit lengthy but it is a great thing personally I will I will just mention all these resources so you can understand that but first of all I will just share all the resources so before trying this on some labs and other things just try to just try to read all the resources so you will get a better approach now these are the things there are a lot of types of attacks let's see first of all what are the type of attacks there are a lot of types of attacks I mentioned some of them here first start with token stealing I will share all the sources where I got all this from so I will mention all the sources so don't worry about that now token stealing what's our main goal doing this steal access token of application and use it to login so how we will do that or what the request will look like for example if we tried login with facebook then you will see that uh, oauth equals to response type token display purpose client id and here is the client id redirect uri now the redirect uri and scope email now how will we stole that thing so find domain used in redirect uri now find the domain which is getting used here and see if you can use the subdomains in the redirect uri point the redirect uri to a page open redirect uri 302 to attackers domain accesses which can be used in redirect uri to pass access token to attacker now you can look ok first of all you will let's complete this Subdomain takeover can be used in this thing if they are allowed 
and backtrack to a page which can be used to open access did open redirect or access this now take a simpler look at this what's your main goal steal token right how will you steal token if you if you modify this place like you are getting you have, like you tried on zomato for example or you tried on uh, udemy so you tried oauth on udemy for example and you are just almost in the end to finish the like yeah you are getting a request like this thing in which the redirect url is udemy.com so if you modify this to a uh, attacker's website or if you try to inject a uh, access as if you are able to use any subdomain of that website then you can try to get the token and you will get that token not actually try to so for us let's assume there is an open redirect so if there is a open redirect at this place then just replace the website with any of your website or you can just open a temporary ngrox server you can just replace it with like http dot double forward slash and attacker dot com so the token which is supposed to go to udemy dot com or the redirect uri will be sent to you on your own domain so you can just steal the domain and use it for malicious purposes you can use the access as here which can pass the token to you if you are if you got a subdomain takeover then you can use that thing here and sometime what happen is you will not be able to perform open redirect or other thing then try like udemy.com is enabled then try to do login.udemy.com if that url is also eligible here then try to find subdomain takeover if you got any subdomain takeover then escalate it and paste the your subdomain at the here and you will get that and you can see that you are only getting domain and subdomains like you are you are able to take over hack.udemy.com and you are only able to use subdomain or main domain on the redirect where i place then just paste your subdomain take over link so you will get that token on your subdomain now backtrack to a page which can be used to open redirect so these are the four ways that you can just try to steal that thing now second thing you can see that you can use the token to log in simple now code stealing main goal still authorization code of application use it to log in into user account now here is a login request some which will look like this thing you can see that and there is a exception redirect uri while exchanging the authorization code with access token must watch we got authorization code so that's an exception now how will you steal this thing find domain used in this place can you use subdomain in redirect uri same as above one check if authorization code derived from manipulated redirect uri works when fetching access token point the redirect uri to a page accesses which can be used in redirect uri subdomain takeover can be used and leading user control external images script are used so this is kind of same but in this we are in above one we are using the access token and in this we are trying to get authorization code but remember the exception that's almost same as that now csrf cross site request forgery now what's main goal connect attacker's facebook account to user's account and log in via attacker's facebook account into user account now what actually happening here let's see this is the request client id redirect uri and then some anti csrf token now what's the methodology to find it check if the state parameter in oauth authorization link is validated then derive yourself a valid authorization code link and don't use it send this active authorization code link to victim your account will get connected with the victim's account and now you can log in on your own account simple but effective you can simply see this thing and it it is effective you can just do perform that thing now post header poisoning yeah now poisoning the host header can lead to account takeover not only during password recovery but also oauth or but also oauth authentication sometime you can affect redirect uri by poisoning the host header 
as a result where am i as a result when the victim exchanges the authorization code for access token he or she will send a request with this token to your domain for example this thing you are just basically doing host the poisoning when you are getting this thing then you can look you can affect redirect your ip by poisoning the host header as a result victim exchanges the authorization code for token he or she will send the request to your token or domain we are using this sort of things in the above one so just modifying the redirect url to getting the tokens now weak redirect same thing now first of all let's you have noticed one thing that we are usually exploit we are usually focusing the uri thing right so what type what can we do with that like there is not only three or four things that only we can only do some sort of limited thing with that thing no actually if i say so then not only redirect uri a lot of parameters are you can do much more than this i just showed this much things but you can do a lot of things by using in the oauth functionalities i will mention the resources and we will see some poc breakdowns so you will notice that there is a lot of things that you can actually perform with that thing so now let's move to this point the redirect uri is a very important because sensitive data such as code is append to the url after authorization if redirect uri can be redirected from an attacker control server this means the attacker can potentially take over a victim's account by using code themselves same thing now how we can do open redirect just change the redirect url and you are on the victim or you are on the attacker's url now what we can do path traversal we can do path traversal you can see this application website and then we can try to call back some sort of path we get ajax now here is the redirect url you can see that it's modified now this differences between the pressing of uri by the different components once again .com at the red food or attacker website at red bar or attacker website .com one more thing parameter pollution you can see that you can just try to do websites or like you can do parameter or you can pollute the parameters now accidentally permitted any redirect url beginning with local host so in a production environment so you are just trying to access this sort of url in which you are just trying to access some local host or just trying to access some product uh, production environment and in then last but not least html injection clear and you can also you can also do the changes javascript that handle query parameter and url fragment so this is not limited to this thing now that's a basic uh, concept of um oauth but that's not the all whole thing you can do a lot of other things using uh using the oauth functionality you can exploit this in many more things so i will mention all the links below so you can understand how you can ex how you can exploit this in a better way so now let's move to some pocs hacker one reports oauth So let's wait for them to open. So these, as you can see, there, this is a GitHub repo for PUC cycles. You can see all these things. There are like seventy-four PUC. So one one misconfigured OAuth leads to pre account takeover. How? Let's download it. Oh no, it's just a screenshot. Leave it. You can see it here. 
But first of all, what are the steps? Go to the URL, sign up using unregistered victim account. Now it will ask you to verify the email. Right? But after some time, the victim is going to sign up using OAuth method. Now what happens here is, victim can easily log in using the victim's account which bypasses the verification method. So it's simple, you're just trying to do manually signing up using unregistered account and then you can try to use OAuth if the, if the verification is not asked here then yeah you did a free account take over here. That's a simple thing. Let me download this POC so we can explain it better. So it's downloaded here. Now check here. Here it is. I think I have showed this POC in my pre-account takeover video. I'm not sure. So here you try to log in with unregistered account. After it, you just fill in your details. Now after some time, just trying to register again with the same account, but using the OAuth thing. And here you are. You have just logged in into your account without verification or you just skip the verification phase so you did a pre account takeover. That's cool. Now stealing users over token using redirect URI. So click on this link and you can see that attacker modified the redirect URI parameter. Now choose any .gov account to login and then I believe you will go redirect to evil.com So yeah, what's its impact is attacker can use this bug to steal victim's access token Alright, now what was the impact of the older ones, this one Only one thing needed is email address, just by knowing email address we can take over any victim's account Now stealing user OAuth token via redirect URI. Now steps to reproduce log into any website in the scope. After logging in, access the following URL. Access the following URL. And on accessing you will get redirect to xboxdays.com test. You can see that this attacker is also uh, changed to this or modified this redirect URI. And it's possible to steal their OAuth credentials. One more simple explanation. Now this one was on Twitter. So now first of all, log in with Twitter account. Like that thing. Um, ABCD at the red mail dot com. Open unfollowerstats.com and they will ask you to log in with Twitter. Then you will get some link like this. Open another browser and log in with the same user. Log in with some another user which is xyz uh, at mail.com and open the older link like this. Yeah, this link on another browser and authorize the OAuth user with xyz mail.com. So you can see that we are using the token of abcd at mail.com to verify or authorize the xyz at the mail.com so that's the issue here got a good bounty for that now steal OAuth tokens There is no clear that thing but let's take a look on this so the formula of validity dialect oh okay 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 got it got it let's take a look on the video twitter outlook
me, Khaleesi. The breaker of chains. You're in. So here it is. Wait a bit. Now let's take a look on this. There will be that cards dot twitter dot com. Okay, so we are getting redirected. So we are getting the code and other things on here. So let's take a look on report. So this bug is caused because of misconfiguration, as in this report. Only this time, Microsoft Outlook is the vulnerable instead of Facebook. This time, I tried to be clear as possible. After sign up of Twitter, ask user to import contact. This only requires authorization. So I believe you have configured your OAuth redirected as Twitter.com in your app setting, meaning Microsoft will accept Twitter.com, anything.twitter.com, anything.twitter.com slash pass as anything as value. So they are just you can say that they are whitelisted the Twitter.com. So now we make an open redirect here. Just say. So cards.twitter.com is redirected to test.com. Qualifies to bypass twitter.com and we will add slash to slash okay percent two five two three behind it like this thing for Microsoft to decode this hash which are stolen credential token. So we can obtain this token using location dot hash and all the user do is single click. If already authorized, lots of people have. To make the thing more clear, here is the unlisted YouTube video to demonstrate how it works. It is also a test that we saw. So this is using the redirect. He is just using a simple redirect and exploiting to just stole the credentials. So I think there is access denied here. No issues. Now ability to bypass email verification for OAuth grants result in account takeover. On third party, all right. Let's take a look on what's happening here. To so create a Bitbucket or GitHub account with random email and log in with laravelship.com. Now, in a different browser, create a GitLab account with same email, but don't confirm it or never confirm it. In that browser, visit laravelship and click sign in with GitLab. Notice you land on page that states you cannot complete OAuth grant without validating your email. Then run the following in burp in burp replacing your cookies, CSRF token and state parameters. And notice that the URL succeeded with 302 and Lara will shift the code. Read the URL and you will see that you are logged into that account. So just you are using a uh, you can say that you are using you are just actually bypassing the verification but with a different method. In this time you are just doing the same thing that. You are logging using your prep, uh, username and password. Then you try to, and then you are asked for verification. But you try to do sign in with OAuth, and you are also getting an error like you cannot complete your OAuth grant without validating your email. But you run this following code of OAuth by just replacing your cookies, and you will see that you got logged into it without verification. Sorry, without so without verification. So that's how you can also do uh, account takeover in this third-party website. So this is how basic uh, OAuth is using, and I will I'm gonna mention some resources. So please take a look on that, so you will get a lot of lot of ideas using that thing. So thanks for watching.